Hello guys and girls and welcome to another Python 3 tutorial. This tutorial is going to be covering the for loop. The for loop is used for pretty much the same tasks as the while loop. They're completely interchangeable. Typically you're going to see the while loop uh, being used for... Um, <laughs> it sounds kind of funny, but I, I suppose I would say finite or infinite uh, tasks and the for loop is usually used to be a little bit more variable and for like uncertain kind of time frames and stuff like that but that said uh, the for loop can actually be used for the same tasks as the while loop um, and the while loop can do all of the things the for loop can do I mean they're completely interchangeable performance wise uh, action wise and all of that so uh, for this reason I, I I will just say that it just comes down to personal preference um, I prefer the for loop myself. A lot of times the for loop is much more condensed uh, or condensable than the while loop. Uh, but again, it really just comes down to personal preference and it just doesn't matter. So anyway, uh, what I'd like to do now is show you guys some examples of the for loop and where you're going to most often see it. Because some people really, like myself included, I do actually use both. Um, it just depends, you know, what the situation is. So. Anyways, uh, let's go ahead and get started. So first what we're going to want is generally you're going to see the for loop being used to iterate through a list. And what iterate means is just go through a list. So let's make an example list. So we're going to name this example list. And we're going to uh, encase this list. And I'm just going to type in random values. You can do the same. You can try and copy my values if you want, but it's not necessary. I'm just putting some variables in or some values in here. <coughs> So in a previous tutorial um, with the variables, I was showing you guys uh, that if you add like multiple variables here, uh, it's going to unpack, right? And so it's going to try to unpack all of these values, right? Uh, but if you just have one, and like, and if you didn't have enough on either side, if they weren't equal, it would it would throw an error. But if you're just assigning a single va uh, variable here, this is totally fine to do. It's going to assign this entire list to this variable. But if you did like example list var, that would throw an error. You would need as many variables as here because it's going to try and unpack the list. Um, just as a quick aside. So now what we're going to do is we're going to say 4x in example list. What do we want to do? So the way to think about this is it's basically for each I So maybe what I'll do is actually uh, to make it a little more uh, understandable. For each uh, number in example list, what do we want to do? So what it's doing is it's creating a variable here, right? Each number now becomes a variable that each step of the way, these numbers are being assigned to this variable each number. And obviously example list is corresponding to example list. So we'll hit enter. And if you didn't notice already by now with like the while loop and all that, when you make one of these loops and you hit enter, it automatically tabs it over for you. So if you're coming from like maybe another language, um, or not at all from any programming language, you have to usually do this. Uh, or actually, you don't have to really do it. In Python, you have to do it. You must have this space here. In other languages, typically, you've got like curly braces, and you come down and you just, you could put all you wanted over here, and then most people say you should have good standards, and you should automatically indent it yourself. Uh, but it is not necessary in other languages. In Python it is, but luckily, usually, it's going to automatically indent for you. So it is just fine. So it makes your code pretty automatically. Um, so that's kind of nice. <clears throat> anyway, so you must have that indentation, and, and, and this indentation will apply throughout the entire loop. So in order to get out of that loop, I'll show you in a moment um, what you would need to do. But for now, let's just say print uh, each number. So we'll save and run that. And as you can see, it just iterated through the entire list in order. 1, 5, 6, 1, 6, 7, 8, 9, 345, 53, 5. Pretty cool. Uh, but now what you can do too is then you come down here and um, we'll just say print continue program like that. Run it. And you'll see here that it, it continues the program after the for loop because it's not under the same indentation. But if you hit tab and you indent this, along with this for loop, you're going to see continue program for every number. So when we run this, you can see that at each step of the way, it continued the program. So just keep that in mind that you're, that's how your indentation really matters. Uh, another quick thing I'll show you guys real, uh, real fast is um, 
first what can happen sometimes if is this, right? You've copy and pasted a lot of code maybe, and it's not indented. So what you can do though is you can highlight all the code, like the what's called a block of code, and you can highlight it and then hit tab, and it will tab the code over. By that same token, if you're uh, code is too far tabbed over, that also will not work. It literally won't run. Well, ugh. Python 3 just keeps throwing me for a loop. Apparently, that's okay. It's going to go ahead and run. <laughs> Hold on. Let me try something else. Uh, I'll come down here, paste, and then let's do this. All right, Python 3. Uh, that was okay as well. Well, at least in Python 2.7, you can't do that. <laughs> but anyway, I'll tell you anyways how you can fix this uh, just so it does look right, because e even though apparently Python 3 is more accepting of improper standards than Python 2.7, you should still try your best to give good standards. So, because it gets very messy uh, when you want to do maybe another for loop down here and do some stuff, right? Uh, so, anyways, what you can do to move a block the other way is highlight it, hold Control, and it's uh, the open bracket. So you can hit that a couple times and it tabs it over. If you don't know what I'm talking about, it's this symbol right here, like this key. You hit that while holding control and that'll shift it over. So that's that. But now uh, back to uh, some more stuff about the for loop. Uh, I was telling you guys that you can use the for loop much like you use the while loop as a counter and it's much better as a counter. Uh, and here's why. So if you remember the for loop that we wrote uh, or the while loop rather, I believe that came out to be four total lines of code, but instead with the for loop, you can do four x in range, and range is a built-in function in Python. Um, so first I'll just show you guys what it's gonna do. One comma 11, and all we wanna do is just print x for now. So let's run that real quick, and you'll see that what it did is obviously our previous program, but then it did one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10, not 11, and the way a range works is it starts at the first number and goes all the way up to the ending number or whatever it is. Now, um, a couple of, uh, or one thing to note, range is a built-in Python function, so you don't have to import it, and it will literally make that range of numbers for you. In Python 2.7, Python's 3. Point, or Python 3.3's um, version of range here has actually been backported to Python 2.7. Um, and it is X range. It's known as X range in Python 2.7, so X range like that. And what is beneficial about this range function over the Python 2.7's range function is when you do something like um, in Python 3.3 and you say range one and like this number, what it's gonna do in Python 2.7 is literally generated a list that is this from one to this number, whatever it is. Um, and obviously that's gonna use a lot of your virtual memory, so your RAM. And it's probably gonna max out your RAM before it completes the operation. But in Python 3.3, or if you use what's called X range in Python 2.7, it turns this into what's known as a generator. And eventually we'll talk more about generators later on. But what a generator does is it only visits that operation once. It doesn't store it in the memory, but it, it will count through. So um, pretty interesting stuff there. Uh, but more on that kind of stuff later since uh, this is meant to just be basics. So that pretty much covers uh, the for loop. A couple of examples of the for loop here, both as a counter and then also as an iterator through a list. Uh, but really this iterated through a list only actually used a generator function to do so. Um, so anyways, uh, that is that. Uh, so hopefully you guys learned something new. Hopefully you guys are enjoying my tutorials. If you have any questions, feel free to post them below. Uh, otherwise, as always, thanks for watching, thanks for all the support and the subscriptions, and until the next video.